Hello all my truth seekers, my name is Keisha. And in this video, I'll discuss Wendy Williams, the former top talk show host who may be blacklisted, yes, and derailed by her own staff or her former television network. Yes, Sony, y'all remember Sony, right? Let's chat. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Now, I talked a little bit about this on one of my live shows. Let's take a sneak peek particular documentary is going inside of her life that she's going through right now, which is pretty much dealing with leeches and people who are taking advantage of her, stealing her money and drugging her and things of that nature. They drugging her to keep her looking crazy and drugging her to um, continue robbing her blind and the guardian of her estate. First of all, I don't even know how that even happened. She's not even some illiterate or non-lucid person she's very very capable of handling her funds so i don't even know how that even got approved i have no idea how that i don't know how wells fargo can say i'm just going to take control of her account because i don't think she can handle her account is that even freaking legal i never understood that ever it's seriously giving me some britney spear vibes i mean seriously but if we, if we wish to go back upon um Wendy Williams life, we will learn that everyone has never liked Wendy Williams. We already know this already. She pretty much got her start on the radio as a shock jock, as they call it. And she was known for getting into fights with famous people, one of them being Whitney Houston, who swore at her in a 2003 interview for asking too many personal questions. Now, this is during a time when, when Wendy Williams was ousting um, Whitney Houston for still being on drugs. You know what I mean? He, seriously saying, we heard you were still doing drugs. Yada, yada, yada. You said crack is wet, whatever, but you're still on drugs. And Wendy Williams heard through the grapevine of this ac accusation. And I guess it must have went viral or something. And I remember Wendy Houston calling the radio and snapping. Wendy Houston was known to snap at people. I mean, seriously, she, even though she was publicized by her record label for being a girl next door and sweep and, you know, just wholesome and churchy and yada, yada, yada and Christian and blah, blah, blah. But that was so far from her personal self. She was not, I'm sure she was sweet. I'm sure she carried some kind of decorum about herself. I'm not saying that at all. May she rest in peace. But Whitney Houston was just like any other sister who grew up in that kind of way she would cuss you out just like the rest of them she would talk crap just like the rest of them she was just a normal woman she wasn't at this high esteem that people were trying to put her on and i think that's what irritated her especially when they did their whole behind the scenes and um reality show she did with bobby brown people couldn't recognize her because it's like who this girl because the music label and her pr team was publicizing her in this sweet whatever way and she wasn't I'm sure she was sweet but she still was just herself you know she talked ratchet she talked ghetto she was wild you know she was snipping cocaine you know she was doing what she did back then and Wendy was trying to convey that image but it was hard to depict her from that image because we were so used to seeing her and Wendy Williams was on the radio call calling her out several times of her dark secrets and they had a little rift on the radio seriously it, i heard it it was crazy <laughs> it was crazy anyway but it wasn't just that that did kind of put on a map but wendy was already on the map already she was already on the map already wendy williams left the show because of health issues and the scandal surrounding her divorce when she revealed that she had been suffering from Graves' disease, thyroid problems, and lymphedemia for years, executives became concerned about her ability to work in 2021. However, she got incoherent, apparently, during a Zoom call with her employees. People were freaked out. She replied, oh, I cannot wait. This is what she said. She said, oh, I cannot wait to get back with you shortly. 
paraphrasing is pretty much what she said. Everyone watching could tell she wasn't going to return anytime soon. And then in February, it was announced that Wendy Williams' show will be ending soon. After a series of temporary hosts that took over for her during the show's 13th season, one was chosen to cover Williams' time slot with a new show. Yeah, Sherry Shepard, who I literally had faith in and thought she would never do that to Wendy Williams. But hey, I guess with the opportunity presented herself, she jumped on that train like it was nobody's business. I'm a little disappointed. Kind of make me see in a different light, but hey, get your paper. It's the only thing I can say. Anyway, but as you know, Sherry Shepard, she had previously worked as a talk show host during her time at The View. So she definitely had experience. And then in January 2022, we learned that Wells Fargo had requested that Wendy Williams be placed under guardianship due to her ill health, thereby freezing her account completely. Not sure how that's legal, but whatever. Because apparently, Wendy countered charges that she couldn't be trusted. Apparently, they felt that she couldn't be trusted with her own money. Submitting an affidavit with the New York Supreme Court accusing Wells Fargo, this is Wendy Williams did, accusing Wells Fargo for wrongfully depriving her of millions of dollars and jeopardizing her financial status. Oh, yes. Now, according to Williams, attorney stated that she wants the world to know that she firmly denies all allegations about her mental health and well-being. Now, during her break from the show, Wendy hired holistic health practitioners to help her achieve maximum health with treating Graves' illness and thyroid issues, her legal team claimed. Now, they also shared photos of Williams watching the Super Bowl. They assured followers that she was completely safe, adding she is of sound and mind. Apparently, she was dismayed by this fraudulently spreading accusations, you know, from an industry, apparently, that was doing that about her, to which she has dedicated her life. So all the accusations that were implied about her were not correct. In August, her former attorney told Page Six that a financial counselor had raised concerns about the host's son using her card. I mean, he completely cut him off. Now, Wendy, a woman who worked very hard for her fortune, was left penniless because her son was taking all her money and her executive was taking all the money. I mean, they were ripping her off blind, seriously. And then we heard about the podcast that she was going to represent. She was going to bring out a podcast and so on. However, it was heard through the grapevine that Network Sony and their little executives blocked all future endeavors for Wendy Williams, that they are primarily the reason, allegedly, behind all of this blacklisting. Now, if you don't believe me, here is a breakdown of the big back Sony industry. I mean, you heard what they did to Michael Jackson. You heard what he said about Sony, correct? You know what? Let's hear what he said one more time before we go any further. First of all... Anyway, um, first let me say, um, um, I really don't like to talk that much. I really don't. I prefer to perform than talk. Uh, You know, um, let me just say this. The tradition, the tradition of great performers from, and, and I really want you to hear what I have to say. The tradition of great performers from Sammy Davis Jr. to James Brown to Jackie Wilson to Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly. The story is usually the same though, you know, these guys work really hard at their craft, but the story ends the same. They usually are broken, horn, and usually just sad, and the story very sad in the end, because the companies take advantage of them. They really do. And, um, um, Sony Ooh. 
Sony, be, being um, you know, being the artist that I am um, at Sony, I I I generated several billion dollars for Sony, several billion, and um, they they really thought that my mind is always on music and dancing and and I and it usually is, but they never thought that this performer myself would out think them. Yeah. Um, so, um, we can't let them get away with, with what they're trying to do because now I'm a free agent. Yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I just owe Sony one more album. It's just a box set, really. And some um, with two new songs, which I've written ages ago. <laughs> Because every, every album that I record, I write, like, literally, I'm telling you the truth, I write, I write at least um, 120 songs every album I do. So I can do the box set and just give them any two songs. So, so I'm leaving Sony a free agent. Um, Owning half of Sony. So, I own half of Sony's publishing and, and I'm leaving them and they, they're very angry at me because of it, but, uh, I just, I just did good business, you know. <laughs> Say it, Michael. Tell the story. But um, so the way they get revenge is to try and destroy my album. But but uh, I've I've always said you know art art good art never dies. Um, Thank you. I love Unbreakable. You know. And Tommy Matola is a devil. I'm not supposed to say what I'm gonna say right now, but I, I have to let you in on a secret. Say it. Uh, please don't videotape what I'm going to say, okay? Turn that off. <laughs> you know what? No, what? I don't mind. Take it. Ah, oh! Michael is getting gangster today! Yeah, 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 yeah. Mariah Carey. After divorce and time, came to me crying. Crying, she was crying so bad I had to hold her. And she said to me that this is an evil man. And Michael, this man follows me, she said. He taps her phones. And he's very, very evil. And she better trust him. And he is a horrible human being. And we, we have to continue our drive until he's terminated. Oh, there you go. We can't allow him to do this to great artistry. We just can't. I just want you to know I appreciate everything you've done. You've been amazing. You're so loyal, Diana. 
Everybody, Waldo, all the people here, I love you all. You've been amazing. Thank you! So you see, they've always been shady. Trust me, I know. Most of my strikes or copyright hits I got back in the day were from Sony Entertainment from Wendy Williams' show. Oh, yes. You see, Fox Television syndicated Wendy Williams' show, who was partnered with CBS. Yes, CBS. Yes. Yeah, that's Columbia Broadcasting Station, which in tail slash is Columbia Entertainment or record label or whatever, which is also the record label connected to Beyonce and many other top artists that Wendy was in bed with and criticized on her show. Oh, yes. The same company that is also in bed with Sony Entertainment Pictures. Okay. Yes. That's Sony Entertainment and then also Sony Pictures. Most of the strikes about Wendy are from Sony, Ditmar, and Mercury. Yes, these are clips from the one, the Wendy Williams show. So when I used to use clips, even if they're not even played through, I just if I use it, just the video, not the audio, they still striked it. Yeah. They were from Sony, Debmar, and Mercury. Oh, yes. So let's put two and two together. This same station, Sony, is responsible for the downfall of many greats, such as Michael Jackson, Prince, Mariah Carey at some point, Don Cornelius. I can go on and on. I'm sure if I go way back, I'll probably find more. Now, quick note. Bad Boy Records was also founded, as we know, by Sean Combs slash P. Diddy and all the rest of his names. But it's partnered with Clive Davis and Arista Records, which is partnered with Sony Music. Are you seeing the chips fall? So, despite Sean Combs appearing on the Wendy Williams show and wanting to make amends, he remained friendly with B and J, that's Beyonce and Jay-Z, whom Wendy was known to disparage all the time. So, all it takes is a short phone call to his boy Clive and everything will be handled. He did it before. I mean, look at Whitney Houston. I mean, that was no coincidence. What about Carrie White? Jay's supposed mistress who died. The same lady who Sean Combs introduced to Jay-Z. You make the call. Now, I hate to say it, and I pray I'm wrong about this, and this is all alleged. But from what I see, Wendy will suffer the same fate as Whitney Houston. Prince, and countless others. I give within a year or less. My vision is telling me sometime this year. Whereas we will start seeing headlines of Wendy Williams dying of some weird overdose or in her bed or on the floor in a tub somewhere, somewhere pretty much in the same state all the rest of these people died at. Because the network was mad at Wendy because she took extensive gaps before engaging in alleged drug-related activities, although it was rumored that she really didn't do any drugs. She just... They were mad about that. And like I said, she was taking these extensive breaks. Allegedly, this is what they were claiming before engaging in drug related activities. And then her boorish cheating and reckless husband, Kevin, he was openly cheating. And they felt Wendy was fickle. She became fickle about returning to the show. They attempted to cover up and carry on without her, but were unsuccessful, unfortunately, unfortunately. Now, when Wendy Williams decided to retire, they announced the show's end and quickly removed all of her YouTube videos and then eventually freezing her account. If anyone, you have to understand this, this is, think about this. If anyone has the authority to do so, it's a billion dollar enterprise, especially who feels tricked. And you can bet they're ensure she would never achieve anything again. They're pissed. Consider what they reportedly did to Michael Jackson and Wendy Houston. We're talking about Michael Jackson and Wendy Houston, who are way more famous than Wendy Williams. So Wendy Williams is a piece of cake for them completely blacklisting her, freezing her accounts. If anyone who has the power to do that, that would be Sony. They are literally a multi-billion dollar enterprise who is in bed with almost every network on television right now. Just saying. Think about that. It was hard to hear that Wendy Williams is suffering from frontotemporal dementia, the same kind that Bruce Willis is. She's only 59 years old. She had to stop production of her show two years ago because of her early signs of frontotemporal dementia, which was in this case, aphasia. Now aphasia is finding the right word, which we all have sometimes difficulty doing. 
but it can become constant and more difficult, and that is an early sign of a brain problem. Frontal temporal dementia has to do with the frontal part of the brain, this frontal lobe of the brain, which is the filter. That is also, think about someone who has alcohol. The more alcohol you drink, the more you shut down that filter. People who have drink a lot of alcohol will say things they would never normally say in public. People with frontal temporal dementia will say things and do things that one would never do in public because that frontal lobe is not developed properly. It's just deteriorating over time from dementia. The reasons people get dementia are complex. We know some of them. We know that she suffered from addictions of cocaine and alcoholism. Both of those are an increased risk of dementia. Other things that can cause an increased risk of dementia include histories of depression, people who have poor diets, age, male sex, those are other things. And even though there are certain things that we can do to decrease our risk of dementia, for example, a Mediterranean style diet decreases your risk of dementia by those who adhere to it by as much as 53%. That's not zero. It still means people can still get it. It just means that we can reduce your risk of getting it. And it's, we are going to hear more and more about dementia as time goes on. Now, some people will say it's all the statins being out there. Statins do not increase your risk of dementia. They actually decrease your risk of dementia. And specifically, they will decrease something called vascular dementia, which is what my mother suffered from. My mother, like Wendy Williams, had a fierce brain. And it is so hard seeing someone with that brilliant brain, that great intelligence, slowly lose it. Just for a few things, they estimate that she has about 12 to 13 years left of life because that's what happens with that type of dementia. Vascular dementia like my mother had was about a five-year course. Alzheimer's about a 12 to 14-year-old course. Why? What happens to the brain? The brain deteriorates so much that it actually loses its ability to do the executive functions involved in breathing, involved in heart rate, involved in all those things your body needs and that's what ultimately people die from when they have dementia. So, horrible disease. We have six and a half million people now who are suffering from it. It's going to only continue unless we have medical breakthroughs. But what you can do to help decrease your risk of this, can't decrease it to zero again, fruits, vegetables, Mediterranean style diet, exercise, talking, social communications, keep your brain active by learning new things, and doing all that. That's the best you can do. And as soon as we have a medical breakthrough, I promise I will be on here immediately touting it. Until then, do the things that you can do. Eat well, live well, enjoy the life, use your brain. Thanks. If you like this, like, follow, share. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications for when I do post my videos. Love you all. See y'all later. Bye.